Hi, in this video, I'm going to explain a RISC-V instruction set architecture and make you familiar with RV32I instructions. All right. This is our proprietary data. Please read this confidential note. As I mentioned, in this course, I will explain a RISC-V instruction set architecture and I will make you familiar with RV32I instructions. RV32I means RISC-V 32 bits integer instructions. Also, I will walk you through RISC-V assembly programming, not much, but whatever is needed for RTL design and verification. So let me set the expectation. As a VLSA engineer, you are going to learn RISC-V assembly programming primarily to design a processor which can implement all RB32I instructions. Also, you will explore how to improve the performance by doing pipelining. So, you will implement a five-stage pipeline processor and then you will also explore how to verify the processor using methodologies like UVM, Universal Verification Methodology. All right. You may have this big question, why processor or why should I take some special efforts to understand the processor design? If you want to create a generic hardware which can support and run different kinds of applications, then processor could be the right solution. How it works? You take any complex electronic system, basically it's composed of hardware and software. We create hardware using a complex system on chip. So this system on chip will have almost all the components needed for the electronic system. And the processor is going to be the main component. So whatever the applications we run, all the applications will be converted into processor instructions and eventually all the instructions will be executed by the processor. That's how the processor is going to initiate and do all kinds of operations. Look at smartphone. Let me explain how it works. This iPhone has got a complex SOC, could be A11 or A12. This SOC has been built using ARM core, could be dual or quad core. Dual means two cores, quad means four cores, four processors. Obviously, we need multiple processors to run multiple applications in parallel. That's what the operating system does. This iPhone as operating system called iOS and there are different kinds of applications, mobile apps like YouTube, Google Map or it could be a simple one like calculator. So when I click on any particular mobile app, for example calculator, what happens? The operating system loads the equivalent binary into RAM. So this particular application has already been compiled into ARM instructions in terms of binary. It's called machine language and that's stored in the storage memory. When you click on this particular app, the operating system loads the binary into RAM and then it loads the starting address of the binary into PC, program counter. You take any processor, ARM core, RISC-V or x86, every processor has a special register called program counter. So the starting address will be loaded in program counter and the program counter is going to increment sequentially. That's how the processor is going to fetch all the instructions from the memory. So the processor will fetch all the instructions from RAM and then it's going to execute all the instructions. That's how we do different things. So in this case, on calculator, I would be able to do different things like addition, subtraction and multiplication, but eventually everything will be converted into processor instructions like add or multiplication or subtraction or division. And that's how the processor is going to calculate the values. That's how you are going to get the results. So look at this. The electronic system is composed of hardware and software. The hardware has been built using system on chip. 
This system on chip will have almost all the components needed for the electronic system in terms of IPs and processor is going to be the main IP intellectual property. So there could be different IPs like processor, RAM, storage memory and IPs for the interfaces, IPs for different kinds of hardware. So using system on chip, we create the hardware system, which is nothing but PCB. When it comes to software, there could be different layers like application software, operating system, compiler, and then assembler. And there could be different kinds of applications like web browser or MS Word or YouTube, or it could be like Verilog or system Verilog simulator. We create all these applications using high level languages like C, C++ or Java. And when we run these applications, eventually they will be converted into processor instructions through compiler and assembler. An operating system is the one which manages IO operations, memory, and then it's responsible for running multiple applications in parallel. Generally, if you look at any complex SOC, there could be dual core or quad core. So, we need to make use of all the cores available in the chip. That's what the operating system does. And this is highly needed to run multiple applications in parallel. That's how basically we improve the performance of the hardware system. So this is how we create any complex electronic systems like smartphone. All right.